webinar and I can see that, uh, you know, Dorothy, uh, people are excited to hear uh, how you have uh, uh, set the Green Party, how you supported there. Uh, so, uh, uh, Rachna, can you uh, start the recording? Oh, it's already started. So, thank you, Rachna. And Anita? Yeah. Uh, excuse me, did you hear when I said, because that time I couldn't hear you well, when I said that... Uh, uh, she is executive Uganda. director of Ecological Party of Uganda, as well as the African uh, coordinator for the Global Greens Women's Network and founding chairperson of East African Greens Women's Network. Dorothy also works as human rights activist for women and children and venerable groups, as well as working on environmental rights. So welcome again, Dorothy, and uh, I would like you to uh, tell more about yourself and then we can switch to the topic. And the topic is the role of women in setting up green parties. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Anita. Like she said, I'm Dorothy Navega from Uganda. I am the executive director of the Ecological Party of Uganda newly elected, the founding chairperson of East African Greens Women's Network, and I am also the African Greens Network. Happy to share with you my experience about the role of women in setting up green parties. And for this topic, Uganda is going to be our case study, but I'll be happy to hear from all of you about the experiences regarding the same topic in your respective countries. Um, Ecological part of Uganda, or EPU, started, was fully registered in Uganda on 13th of August, 29, 2009. And our motto is Peaceful Coexistence for Sustainable Development. It has grown since then, and in 2016, we managed to field a presidential candidate, though we stopped at the stage of nomination due to unfair electoral laws. And just last week, we managed to get uh, our first elected official, and that is the guild president of, of um, Uganda Management Institute is a highly respected institute in Uganda and the guild president is like the political leader or the political head of that institution and he's our labor minister in ecological part of Uganda so it was a great success for us and we are still in the mood of celebrations for that success. Um, I'll go straight to the topic the role of women in setting up green parties uh, and I'm, like I said, I'm using a case of ecological part of Uganda. As you may be aware, uh, women are very important asset in as far as mobilization and action is concerned. And setting up a party is not an easy thing. It requires concerted efforts and to achieve the results. Without involvement of women, it wouldn't have been is it at all to set up ecological part of Uganda? So they played the following roles. And I'll begin with recruiting. Having a party registered is one thing, but also getting people to join is another. We needed people, we needed, we, we needed people at that time, so we had to recruit. The women had a lot to do regarding recruiting because people believed in them. Naturally, when a woman says something, people believe in them. They trust them more than men. So at uh, the beginning, uh, recruitment was majorly done by women. I remember the recruitment at universities. It is women who uh, participated like 80% only 20% of, of men escorted us as we went to universities to recruit. 
So, and the women did a very important work in recruiting people to ecological part of Uganda. Apart from recruiting, uh, there is something that also helped us a lot and was uh, setting, up, setting up the governance structures. Like every organization, a party cannot function well without governance structures. Women in ecological part of Uganda were so instrumental in setting up governance structures. For example, Robina, who is now our uh, vice president of uh, African, African Greens Federation, did a very important uh, job in setting up governance structures. She organized activities in every parish in Kampala to set up Women's League, Youth League, and so many others. These were so, so, so vibrant, especially the Women's League, League which I led by then, uh, and working very hard, being involved in activities that are attracted the community members in the party. And uh, members and supporters were many because of those structures. Another important thing was the international partnership and fundraising. You know when you're starting party, you need a lot of support and you cannot do it alone. Therefore, um, we needed to find partners. We need to find other people, maybe from green parties, uh, from other countries. And this was mostly done by women. I'm not saying that men did not do anything about uh, getting partners and uh, uh, getting partners and fundraising. But you all know very well that when it comes to handling funds, women are more trusted with it. So whenever we got partners, for example, grains from other countries, uh, women were so, 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 so important in convincing these people to work with us and also an important tool when it came to, uh, to fundraising because when the funds came to help us do some acti activities, they were interested with women because they were trusted with handling money. So those activities also helped us to attract more people, to attract more members to the party and that's how we grew with those activities that we got support from other green parties in other countries, especially the global north. And as we grew and went on and went on, there are some things that women did, like the participation, how the participation of women made a difference in the party. The participation made a difference in, in the party in the following ways, and one of which is um, develop, developmental activities. In Uganda, and I believe in most parts of the world, politicians are, not, uh, are, are no longer trusted. People are really losing hope in politicians. Whenever you begin your political talks, people tend to run away. They don't like to listen to you because they think you are a liar. Uh, saying that, Robina, other women, and I decided that we should use another approach, and that is the developmental activities. Uh, we decided to attract people to the party, approaching them through projects. For example, we would identify women groups and help them in ways that we would afford for example, you'd see uh, women who are uh, sewing baskets and everything, and you'd get partners to get for them machines. Robina did that once. And also farmer groups, and she would get uh, teachers or trainers to come and train them. So, but at the beginning of that, project or the training, we would introduce ourselves as so-and-so coming from the green part of Uganda 
and we'll tell people at the end of the project or the program or the training that if you're interested to join us, you are welcome. So they would, they would not see us as people who have gone to look for votes, who have only remembered them at the time when we want to recruit them, but people who have come with developmental activities, but coming from the Green Party. So they would say, oh my God, this is a very different party. They care about our needs. They care about development. I think it's the best party to join. That way we got many people from the community to join us and it made us very popular uh, because our party had become a darling in communities. Uh, another important aspect that uh, women did to, uh, to make a difference in our party was the spirit of voluntarism. Since the party was just beginning, and even if it's not beginning, there are a lot of activities to do. But you know you can't have the money to pay all the staff in, in, in the party. So there is that need for voluntarism, the heart of voluntarism, to be willing to work without pay. But you know, you know men, you cannot convince them to work without any pay. But women were always there to do voluntary work. Uh, women were busy offering free services to the party as men were busy waiting for only funded activities because it's in their nature not to work for free. But uh, the, the voluntary activities we did which included doing the don't work, the don't work in uh, recruiting, mobilizing. It was really very good that um, it helped the party to grow without waiting for funds. Another aspect was about being mild talented. Because women are mild talented, they have done a lot that has made a difference in the party. We organize networking meeting, knowing very well that those people we invite will come with others. So if you come with a friend to that networking meeting and they hear about the brain party and they marry and they're happy, they are attracted somehow, even if they weren't interested in politics. They come because they come to socialize and network. And in the end, they become interested in uh, joining the party. But all that is done by women because they are multi-talented. The multi-talent also uh, has led us to organize stuff like climate change adaptation, climate change adaptation measures, trainings, like um, we have what we call briquettes, which are uh, an alternative to charcoal. I don't know whether you use charcoal also there in uh, Asia, but we use charcoal a lot in Uganda and it's becoming very expensive. So because we are creative and we are more talented, we organize such trainings for people to learn how to make briquettes. And as they come, we don't only invite party members, we invite community members and women. And when they come to that, still, like I said, in the beginning, we introduce ourselves as so-and-so from the Green Party of Uganda. And people become interested because we have come with something and they join in the end. So the creativity has made a difference in as far as membership is concerned. And also, Mobilization. Uh, mobilization is an important tool, like I said, in every step of the of uh, a party uh, activity. No one could beat women when it came to mobilization. Like I said, naturally we have a convenient time and everything it takes to attract masses to to an organization, a party, and everywhere. And uh, during that time when Robin, I was struggling to fill up positions of the newly formulated structures, 
she could plan the activity. There was another woman who was called uh, Farida. She could do the agenda. And then um, we uh, identified people from different areas. For example, they would say, Dorothy, you are choir a member uh, because I sing in church and I sing in other choirs. So I would mobilize people from the, uh, the, the choir. I would mobilize people from our church and women in that area. And then we would ad identify another woman, for example, a leader of a women group or a leader of a youth group to mobilize the people and would draw a program and say, now this Friday we are going to this area to mobilize. And uh, the next Friday or Saturday we are going to the other area and identify like someone from the university who is vibrant and we tell them please mobilize for us. Um, a number of students, we are coming to talk to them about the Green Party. And I'm telling you, it was mostly women who did the mobilization. So that made a difference in our party. Uh, in my conclusion, I would say that um, women make a very big difference in the growth and development of political parties, right from the setting up and on and on as the party grows. It is therefore very important to involve them, motivate them, and empower them through electing them in party leadership uh, so that they, their capability can be tapped because they have the power to make change. I thank you very much. Thanks, Rati. Uh, uh, that was wonderful, and you were here to speak your unique experience and how women are a very important asset for mm. mobilization and action inside the political parties. And running mm. an emerging emerging green party requires concern, concerted efforts. Exactly. So yeah. and you yeah and you have you have achieved that. So without yeah. the involvement of women, it wouldn't be, have been so easy to build the ecological party of Uganda. So uh, this was awesome that we, we heard various examples, how Rubina contributed and how you contributed in building the party. And so, other women. Uh, yeah, and yeah, other women also, yeah. So anybody has any uh, comment or question, uh, can raise the hand and we can um, come together and discuss. Eva here from Sweden. Could I ask? Yes, Eva. Yeah, yes, Eva. Thank you. I'm so happy to hear Dorothy tell how they succeeded because it's the same. I, I think it's the same everywhere in the world. You are trustful when you're a woman because you are. A, you get an image of of a trust. And it's very important. And I built up also the part in Sweden. And it's so like what you said, how to mobilize, how to have a structure. We can today talk about that we have the same structure, how we mobilize in, in, before the elections and so on. It is stable. You can use it. And we also wrote uh, letters to people in, in the old days, we started 81 and 82 was the first election. And we were coming from the different jobs after they had finished for the day and we met in, in a place and then we were sitting there and said, who can you write to? And, and we wrote to orphan couples. So from the beginning, the party was very much couples because we wrote to this and that person, Anderson, Peterson, and Lundstrom and I. So it was so we could mobilize uh, from the beginning. And I wonder now, uh, how many are you? Could you say how many you are in the party? And could you say how many are active today? Or is it diminishing during some periods and coming back other, another period and so on? How is the situation in your part in Uganda? In Uganda, um, 
we I wouldn't say it is diminishing, but it was at the, uh, at some point, and that was actually one of my my my, my points. But then we fought, and it was like back on its road. Uh, we had some problems in the party, and it, because it was registered some time back, but you, as you can see, we only now have one elected. Uh, Person, we had recruitment from uh, from areas, and we are still we are now very very prepared for the next elections. About the number of, of of people in the in the party, that is always a very difficult question for me, because we have a problem. We don't have. Uh, an online uh, registration. We have just rebranded our our we website now, and we decided that we do an online registration so we can see the number of people that have joined. We have some people who are our followers who claim to be uh, members of Green Party, but they are not registered, and. Um, the Secretary General, I always ask the Secretary General the real number of people in the in the in the party, and he's like we are still uh, preparing our books, and I'll tell you. So he hasn't really told me the number of people in the party, but I would say in Kampala we are about uh, two hundred. 200 and I'm here to find out in other areas and it's something that I'm really uh, doing with the Secretary General and the Chairperson to get the real number of people in the ecological part of Uganda. Thank you very much. I Thanks, don't want Dorothy. to guess. Yeah. Thanks Dorothy. Uh, Nikki. Thank Hi Dorothy, <clears throat> I live in New Zealand. It's great to hear from you. Um, I, I also run choirs for a job here, so yeah. it was good to hear that you recruit through your choir. I wondered. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> my question, I guess, uh, I, I mentor someone, and my question is really on behalf of her. I um, I wonder if you've had much um, resistance from men or difficulties with men not wanting to share power or encourage women and if you have how have you managed that yes that is very true and that's a very good question um like in every party patients even if they say there is supposed to be gender balance the gender is so deep, uh, different even if they say that we 50% women, 50% men, you will always notice that the top one will be a man, and then the vice president or vice chairperson will be a woman, and then they'll give us the also the the position of secretary, such thing. And when it comes to finance, it will be the man because for them they only want to fire to handle finances. And even in the positions we hold, they still come behind and dictate. They come to you and tell you, okay, Dorothy, you have organized a workshop for women and you're going to elect your, uh, the women leaders. But you know what? I don't want so-and-so. I want so-and-so to be the secretary. So you can imagine that bullying. In, even in the positions that you hold, so it's so uh, discouraging, but how we managed to handle that is we became so powerful <laughs> that they also began to fear bullying us. 
like if they told you i want this and i want this person in this position in your in your in your committee you told them excuse me i am the leader of this network and i i have the power and i also understand please wait and talk when um um when you're the leader in a particular thing for now let me also act please we find a way of convincing them that we are also people and we are also we can also manage our own uh our own programs but that is very true they come and interfere in everything because they think they are powerful and we are a weaker sex which we refuse to believe to believe now thank you very much for that question thanks uh, dorothy and uh, nikki uh, now we have linda with us uh, she has a question yeah. you're on mute uh, linda Okay, sorry, this is my first time, so I'm stuffing up a bit. Uh, I live in Sydney, which is a big city, and because I'm on council, um, I can get a lot of information out, and, um, you know, so I can promote the green. Having a local councillor is fantastic for the Greens. But when you want to reach people in, and my ward, I think it's 40, 50,000 people. I was just wondering if where you come from, how many people are you uh, contacting? Do you have a big city or is it a small uh, group of people you're reaching? And does that, do you think that makes a difference to the way to operate? Have you got some suggestions? Thanks. Thank you very much for that question. I live in a, a big, big city since it's the capital of Kampala, but I also work in the second largest um, district, which is Wakiso district. So normally I do my work in Kampala and also in uh, Wakiso, the neighboring district. It's a very big city and we have a lot of people but we don't, we can't say we can meet them at the same time. What we do is we use um, uh, already organized groups. For example, when we, we were recruiting and mobilizing, we decided to go to groups, like I said in the beginning, there's so many women groups and there are also many other local uh, community-based groups which are not only women so if you wanted information on on such people and you want to to reach out to them you go to what they call the uh, community development uh, department at districts and in the city councils though they will give you a list of organizations sometimes you go to them sometimes you go to the internet and find out the information so you write to them and you say we have something to talk to you about like i said for us we use the approach of developmental activities we didn't go direct to them to ask for, for to, to ask them to join the party so we would, uh, identify for example a uh, community-based organization maybe helping women with um dis disabled children and we would uh, uh, talk to their leader and make a program. We go to them, maybe make uh, get someone to talk to them. It would be like telling them how to do some work at home without going to the market. They normally at home when they get employed somewhere, uh, they are always. Uh, uh, sucked after some time because they don't have the time for that job since they have children to look after. So we would say we have projects that can make you uh, do the work at home and would bring teachers to train them. And in the beginning we would, uh, we would introduce ourselves as so and so from the Green Party and at the end tell them that if you're really interested in joining our party, you 
you are welcome. So we identify such groups and also uh, like churches. Uganda is a very religious country. We would go to churches where we pray from and talk to the youth, talk to the women. And also we would also identify institutions like higher uh, institutions of learning, universities, and we look to the guild presidents or one of our members there to organize a group on such and such a day. So we like we programmed ourselves in two months or one month, we'll say every Saturday we are going to reach out to people. So we just identified groups uh, in a district. When we finish Kampala, we go to Wakiso, and then uh, someone else who is another town will invite us like that, like that. We don't meet them at the same time. And I uh, thank you very much for your question. And if I didn't understand the question well, you're free to tell me to repeat and tell me what you meant. No, that, that was good. Um, I think you must do a hell of a lot of work. Mm. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Dorothy and Linda, both of you. Now we have Rose Reed uh, next for the question. Rose Reed. Okay. okay. Thank you, um, Anita, and uh, thank you, Dorothy. I'm uh, very interested in um, hearing some more about what is the relationship between the, uh, the Women's League and the Youth League um, and the party. Do you have uh, positions on your leadership team for, for women or uh, do they function quite um, separately? And um, if you can explain, um, please, uh, why it is the way that it is, that would be very helpful. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Ross. First of all, I would begin with the relationship because between the women and youth and the party. One, first of all, um, we have some people who belong to the two at the same time. For example, if you are a youth and a girl, you belong to both the women's league because you because of the fact that you're a woman, and you also belong to the youth league because of the fact that you're youth. And uh, we have other leagues like the league, the elder league, uh, league for the uh, for the children because we also have children who belong to the party who are neither youth or women or or elderly. We also have the ones who belong to the, to the, uh, like the labor, uh, like the, work, the workers, the working group. And then we also have the vulnerable groups, but the vulnerable groups is also confusing because it has all, it, it has many people. For example, it has the women, it has the people with disabilities, and it also have the children. Like you asked, uh, do we have positions? Our answer is this, like uh, we have, for example, the, women, the Women's League. And the leader of the Women's League is from the NEC, like the National Executive Committee. If you are the secretary for women on the National Executive Committee, then you are the leader for the Women's League. If you're the secretary for the youth, you are the leader of the Youth League. But with the Youth League, you also have a committee. The Youth League has its own committee and the Women's League has its own committee. For example, uh, before I became the executive director of, um, of, of the... Uh, ecological part of Uganda, I was the chairperson for the Uganda Women's League. And being the chairperson of the Uganda Women's League, the league sat down and chose its own committee. And it has the chairperson who was Dorothy speaking, and then we had a secretary, we had a treasurer, and also a communications secretary on that league. So we have those leadership positions 
everything that you have and the women has its own. We have uh, also leaders in other committees, but like I said, it's mostly the Women's League and the Youth League that is very active and which also has elected its committee. Others have not yet uh, elected its, its, their committees. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dorothy, and thanks, Rose. Next, we have Mahima Bharadwaj uh, for the next question. Mahima. Yeah. Hi, Dorothy. It was nice to hear your experience and steps you took to create a network and include women in party. Uh, mm -hmm. As we are also doing the same thing, we are creating the network right now. We just started. So I would really like to know how you convince women to join us, I mean to join our cause. Because when I communicate with them, they seem very happy and interested to join the cause. But when they hear about party and politics, they back out. And when they join, how you sustain them? I mean, we have problems when you, when you join party and politics, there are ma so many males. When you put your thoughts, they will, they will counter attack then what you do to sustain them? I just want to know. Thank you very much, Mahima, for that question. One, yes, we also have a problem of people shying away from politics. But what we do normally, from the beginning, we tell them that this is a political party. We don't want to surprise them. Then if we go to meet them, with activities that are developmental. When we introduce ourselves and say we are from the Green Party, we also add that the Green Party is a real political party registered in the, with the Electoral Commission of Uganda. So even if we mention politics at the end, they will not be scared. We already know that it's a political party. And what we do to, say, to sustain them is we we make them very very active we know like everywhere in the world we men are bullies when you raise up your hand in the meeting to say something they will counter attack you like you said but you also show them just be active just uh be very very creative and uh, uh, think about activities that will really attract women to your party. I, I, I'll give you an example of the networking meetings that we do here with the women. So if they come to those networking meetings and they meet other people, they meet new people, they share with them their experiences, they share happiness. And what we do these days, we don't meet in, in like very uh, uh, working condition rooms. We, we might even decide to meet in bars. We meet in bars, we meet in gardens, and we buy ourselves drinks. We don't go to very expensive ones because the green part is, uh, is already known to be very intellectual. So you lose these people who are down, down at, like you see our, our community women. They're not so educated, but they're voters and we need them. So you, you, you have to change. So the mindset of people who come to Green Party meetings, you have to show them that you're local like them and uh, socialize with them and show them that you're not indifferent from them. That's how we sustain them. We, we chat with them. We talk about all sorts of things. So they keep on coming. Even if they didn't want to join the party, they come because they think when I go there, I talk my mind and I, I, I am happy and we share experiences. So next time they will come again just to be happy. And when they come and listen to what they, we do, they become interested and decide to join the party. So that's how we sustain them. Thank you very much, my uh, for that Thank you, thank you, Dorothy. Yeah. Thanks, Dorothy, and uh, thanks, Mahima. And Mahima is from India. Yeah. Uh, in, India Greens Party. Yeah.
So next we have uh, Eva goes with us. So Eva, you're here. Yes, I'm here. Nice to hear you. You really care about your voters and your members. I really hear it's very important to take care of the people. When you once have met them, you also have to hang on and see them. You must see every person. And I, you are very, very clever, I, I believe. I know also that Green Forum from Sweden has been involved. And can you tell a little about how they can support you about education and so a Green Academy or whatever you do? Thank you very much, Eva. Uh, when I talked about partnership and uh, fundraising from other countries, especially the Global North, I really wanted to talk about uh, Green Forum, but uh, I thought maybe if I mention everyone, uh, Green Forum and then uh, the Green Part of England and Wales, that maybe the time won't be enough, but I, I am so, 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 so happy you asked that question, Eva, because now I get a chance to talk uh, about our great partners. Uh, the Green Forum of Sweden has really helped us a lot. We had um, a, a, an academy of the women, green women politicians, and we had, we, we had spent a lot of time with the we, with the uh, with the project proposal, and we didn't have any funding. First of all, um, these are uh, uh, international or uh, the organisations from the global north so far don't support individual parties, but they support regional parties. But remember, when they say they support East African Greens Federation that will also involve the women from uganda because we also belong to the east african Greens women network i am the chairperson east african Greens women's network and we had a program which i wrote about uh, the training of uh, green female politicians and um, the green forum funded it they have actually funded two of them. One was uh, co-supported with the Green, uh, Green, uh, Green Part of England and Wales, and Green Forum came in and uh, uh, paid our trainer and her travel and everything. It was in Rwanda. And that is when we, we managed to even have a meeting where we had our our committee constituted. It was in Rwanda. It was a training in a electoral, uh, uh, electoral campaigns and communication. It was very, very important. From that uh, training, we had people empowered and we had women from East Africa go for elections. For example, we had one in, uh, in, in Kenya who went for election, though she didn't win. We had uh, some other people, women from Rwanda who went for elections. In Uganda, we haven't had elections since then, but that training helped us a lot because we already have women who are going to to take up a, a, uh, to, to, to campaign and to get elected in the next elections in Uganda, which are going to be in 2021. We also had a training here in Uganda it was in Kampala last last April. In um, it was about uh, green faith and uh, energy, energy because everywhere in the world, everyone is talking about climate change and which alternatives we can do, what we can do about uh, ensuring we tackle climate emergency. So we got women from Burundi, Rwanda, Uganda, and Kenya. They all came here to Uganda and we had that training. And it has really helped us because from that training, that's when we started uh, local trainings. 
these local trainings have really attracted a lot of people to the party because they think we are a very different, unique party in Uganda and elsewhere in Kenya. We have another uh, 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 Kenyan uh, women grains. They're also doing a lot ever since that training. So I must really, really have to be empowered. Even as I, I, as I speak now, I feel that a confidence I have is because of the different trainings that I've, I have had with the Green Farm Forum programs. They don't only support us, they also supported um, trainings, uh, academies in, uh, uh, in Southern Africa, where we had five uh, countries participating. I and Robina went to that training, and at the end of the training, we decided to formulate a South African, South African Green Women's uh, Network, which is also standing now. It was uh, formulated after the training that was organized by Green Forum, and five countries were involved. We had Zambia, we had Zimbabwe, we had Mozambique, we had Mauritius, and we also had Madagascar. Those were many countries, and uh, we, they didn't have a network. They or they already have not. Uh, uh, they already have, have now a network that me uh, and Robina started, helped to formulate, and we are so happy that it is it is now operating. Green Forum also helped in a training in West Africa. So uh, there is so much to talk about uh, Green Forum and I can't stop unless I, I decide to. So um, that is it. I, I also advise Anita and other people from uh, Asia Pacific Greens to make use of these partnerships because they're so helpful, especially for our growing parties in, uh, in the Global South. Thank you very much, Eva. Thank you very, very much. Thanks, uh, uh, Dorothy. And uh, when we are looking forward uh, for the support of Green Forum in Asia Pacific. And now we have uh, Suhi from uh, Korea Green Party. She has a question for you. Hi, uh, Dorothy. Thank you very much for uh, for the webinar. Um, it's very inspiring again and again to hear stories of such uh, as stories of success of women's network and women actively participating in politics. Um, uh, and my question is actually directed to something that I find fundamental at the same time, very uh, uh, perhaps uh, basic. Um, it's related to communication. Uh, I'm from Green Party Korea. Green Party Korea uses a lot of social media platforms and uh, short infographics so that it will be able to communicate with party members and also with members of society in general. Um, what kind of uh, forms or what kind of platforms do you most often use to communicate with members and of course with non members? Yeah. So that's a very, very important and good question. Social media has really, really done a lot. We have a Facebook page for East African. Uh, we have one for Uganda. We use Facebook a lot. And uh, whenever there is something, whenever there is an activity that we're going to do, we communicate through social media because it reaches out to many people everywhere. I, I believe we have a network problem some, somewhere, somehow, especially in the villages, but really people with mobile phones now and mobile, uh, uh, and uh, what we call WhatsApp, also, we are really able to to communicate. For example, well, with, with the people here, I used a lot of um, uh, the South WhatsApp group. And there, whenever there is something we want to communicate, we put it 
And then people reply from there. And it's my, uh, I'm going to share my WhatsApp, my, my WhatsApp um, phone number so that that person can get in contact with me. And I, uh, I, put, I put her in contact with other people from Madagascar. And uh, it will be wonderful. But we also have um, uh, a mailing list. Yes, okay, that is not social media, but I must tell you, we use also a mailing list, Network for Global Greens Women's Network. I have a mailing list which has many, uh, like I, I tried and contacted everyone I knew from every country that had a Green Party, asking them for at least one contact of a woman from that party. When they gave me that list, I, I made a mailing list. Whenever there is something I want to communicate, be it a webinar, be it uh, uh, something like COP25, whenever there is chance, that's when I communicate, that's what I used to communicate to the women. If only one woman or two from each party or from each country gets to know that, I advise them to also share it to their networks and it is very good. Same with the Global Greens Women's Network. They also have a mailing list and they ask us to give them our, uh, our contacts and which we did shared and um, they also communicate through that mailing list. So we use social media a lot, my dear. We post everything. We not, we not only post communications, but even activities. Whatever we do, we post on that. I think uh, Dorothy is in a bad network connection and we have lost her. So I, yeah, it was a good, uh, good examples to hear how uh, they are working. So, uh, and we are very close uh, to the time we, we have decided to have our webinar in one hour. So we are very close to that. Anybody has anything to say or suggest or Anything. Dorothy is back. So Dorothy, you're there? Yes. But uh, still we can't hear her. Dorothy? Speaker from Amazon. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Dorothy. You. Thank you, Anita. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. It was great. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dorothy and yeah. Anita. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Richman, can you put off the recording? Uh, I wanted to discuss.